Haha, <laughs> yeah, so buckle up because this one is a pretty interesting conversation coming from one of the more, let's just say, tenured hockey minds in the Toronto media sphere. So, what we're doing today is going over onto Howard Berger's website. Yeah, you probably know who this is. If you are indeed a Leafs fan, he was part of the original September 1992 launch of the Fan 590, and he has his own blog where he writes about stuff mostly with the Toronto Maple Leafs. There are indeed some very strong opinions about this guy when it comes to the things that he writes. Stuff like leaving Mitch Marner available to the Seattle expansion draft, letting the Kraken take him, and using that money to sign Zach Hyman, the entire, oh, you should move Nylander to defense kind of thing that popped up earlier on. But, long story short, Howard Berger is indeed a somewhat notable voice in the hockey media world. And as a result, when he does say stuff on his website, I do think that it is sort of interesting to go out there and read and acknowledge these ideas. And this one over here caught my eye so much that I wanted to make a video about it. So, the link will be in the description to betweenthepost.ca. This is indeed Berger's website. Take a look at this piece from January 27th. Could the Toronto Maple Leafs land Big Z? Now, Big Z, who's Big Z? You kind of know who Big Z is. Big Z is the big Zdeno Chara himself, the big guy. And I saw this article pop up and I read through it because, you know, the title. It's a pretty interesting article, right? And I was mostly reminded of the conversations we had about a year ago when Zdeno Chara was indeed a free agent before he signed with, what was it, Washington or New York? One of the two. Before he went to one of the new teams that he went to post-Boston Bruins. And we had a conversation in a video back in said time frame about the Toronto Maple Leafs because it came out from, I believe it was the TSN crew, that Zdeno Chara was apparently somebody of interest in Toronto indeed. And so I had the PNG file of Chara jersey swapped with the Leafs, and we had that entire thing going on, and it was a very well-received video, so I was very thankful for that. But today, 2022, seeing this idea pop itself back up again got me kind of thinking, okay, well, it's a different Chara. He is no longer the Boston Bruins guy. He spent a few years away from the bees. And it's not the same Leafs team anymore. This is a completely different kind of construction we have and a completely different level of expectations for this Leaf squad, right? So why not revisit the idea? Let's go over onto betweenthepost.ca, Berger's website, and read what he has to say. The last time the Maple Leafs won the Stanley Cup, they were hockey's version of a retirement home. Consider the ages of the following players, integral to the 67 playoff upsets of the Chicago Blackhawks and Montreal Canadiens. Bauer was 42, Stanley 40, Kelly 39, Horton 37, Sawchuck 37, Armstrong 36, and Pronovost was 36 as well. All of the aforementioned are deceased. Bauer, the legendary goaltender, was the oldest Maple Leaf ever when he retired in December 1969, one month past his 45th birthday. Future Hall of Fame defenseman Zdeno Chara turns 45 on March 18th of this year. Could you imagine the giant Slovak pulling on a Toronto jersey three days later after the March 21st NHL trade deadline? If the Leafs are looking for savvy, belligerence, depth on the blue line, and Stanley Cup experience, they could not do much better than renting the Big Z from the Islanders. This, of course, would require the cooperation of Lou Lamorello, demoted from GM to senior advisor by the Leafs on April 30th, 2018. Kyle Dubas took a spot in the big chair. Just more than three weeks later, Lamorello fled to become the GM of the Islanders, and then he lost John Tavares, yada, yada, yada. It's a whole bunch of stuff. It's the context behind everything here. But the idea that is indeed being brought up is Zdeno Chara going over to Toronto. 44 years old, turning 45, 6'9", 249, left-handed defenseman signed till the end of this season at $750,000. Now, playing for the Islanders, it's been kind of difficult to gauge because he's got four points in 35 games played. Okay, it's not great. He's on pace for about, let's say, nine or ten points. He had ten points all of last season with the Capitals. Two goals, eight assists in 55 games. But... You do have to remember that the Islanders this year are doing pretty poorly, and that team pretty much doesn't really have too much of a shot of making the postseason this year, especially since the East 
is pretty much solidified already. Zidane O'Chara, of course, being the guy that has kind of tormented the NHL in the role of the Boston Bruins captain all this time, has been a pretty notable contender against the Toronto Maple Leafs in each of the playoff defeats the team has had. On the article, it says this, After spending last season with the Caps, Chara contemplated retirement, but he signed a one-year $750,000 deal with the Islanders. Hanging on to the 6'9", 250-pound behemoth beyond the trade deadline would not make sense for Lamorello. He will trade this guy for a draft pick and or a prospect, both of which the Leafs would happily unload to acquire Chara for the stretch run and the playoffs. Why? It seems rather obvious. The next paragraph goes over how the Maple Leafs are supposed to be really good and how they're currently on pace to having the most wins at mid-season in franchise history, yada yada yada. It's pretty good stuff right here for Toronto. And indeed, there is a good cast of players on this team making their returns in a very big way. Jack Campbell is the first goalie in Leafs history to earn 20 victories in the first half of the season. You have Matthews, you have Marner. These guys are back and better than ever. They're doing their thing. The Leafs are middle of the pack amongst NHL defense units and were badly exposed in recent road losses to Colorado and New York. A short-term dose of Chara would help stabilize the blue line. He then talks about how Big Z is old and how the Leafs would have to overpay for the likes of guys like Klingberg and Chitrin with no chance of affording either player beyond this year. And because it would be very difficult for this team to go out there and retain everybody, why try going out there and getting any of these big expensive players that you would have to keep? So why not go with Achara, a guy who will probably only be here for the short term and help out in that way? And so now you discuss Toronto and Chara. Now, I'll be honest here. This idea makes a lot more sense to me now than it did the first time we talked about it when it was reported that the Leafs did indeed have interest in Chara and his services. But I still don't really know if this would go down. Obviously, you have to go out there and make amends with Lou Lamorello. Obviously, you have to make sure this guy's willing to help you out and actually trade with you. But you also have the entire historical side of it. Okay, Chara has been the captain of a Boston team that has broken the hearts of many, many Leafs fans over the years. And so just the poetic nature of having this guy suiting up for the Maple Leafs one day, it's honestly quite the story, isn't it? And obviously, you know, I'm not going to go out there and say that Chara would be the worst pickup in the world, because at the end of the day, he is what Zidane Ochara is. He's big, he's okay defensively, he's not great offensively, but it's like, you don't really get Chara because you're getting a legitimately good player. You're getting Chara because of everything else he brings with him. It's that leadership, it's that experience, it's that maturity, it's that poise, it's that mentorship. There are so many years of Zidane Ochara in the National Hockey League. This guy was playing in the league before I was even born. And so, this guy has what it takes to go out there and win championships and be a leader and be a top defenseman and be a lower end defenseman. He's been everywhere. And so this is the type of player that could, in theory, go out there and really stabilize a rough Toronto Maple Leafs decor that has been looking for improvements in other areas anyway. Is a Jacob Chitrin or a John Klingberg all you need? Sure. But those guys are so expensive. And when it comes to Chara, he'll probably not be in that same territory in the slightest. And so, talk to me in the comments what do you think about this entire idea brought upon by Howard Berger on his website. I know the guy has a reputation for going out there with some takes that have themselves some fans and some haters, but there is indeed some very interesting stuff once in a while that pops up over here. So let me know in the comments, if you're a New York Islanders fan, would you be willing to trade Zidane Chara over to Toronto? Get this guy out and away from his what, his reunion place and send him over to a team that might be able to give you a prospect or a pick or two, what would you want for Zidane Chara, the big Z, in a trade? And if you're a Toronto Maple Leafs fan, would you want to see this go down? I get it, you guys kind of have a hatred for the Bruins that transcends the current captaincy reign of Patrice Bergeron, but if given the offer, would you do this? And if so, what would you give up? Would you give up that one prospect that everybody is talking about? Or maybe that draft pick that everybody is highlighting could be used to draft a steal? You can fill in the blanks as to what is appropriate and what is not based off of your own prerogative. But talk to me in the comments all your thoughts. I hope you enjoyed this video. And bye.